Okay, hello design students. Today we're going to be looking at Gravit Designer, a replacement for Adobe F Illustrator that we will be using in uh, our browser uh, during the virtual learning portion of this year. Now to get to Gravit, you can type G-R-A-V-I-T dot I-O for Gravit Designer, or you can type designer dot I-O slash E-N so this here is Gravit Designer. It is a browser-based vector editor. Um, so you want to make sure you're in a current top-end browser such as Chrome or Firefox or the newest version of Microsoft Edge. Um, you can see here that a vector designer lets us do all sort of art online. Um, but an important thing to understand, we'll talk more about vector later, but um, this is basically made with lines and filled with colors to make our art here. So you want to click sign up free and uh, it may take a moment to load. And when it does, you can either sign up with your own personal email address or you can use Google or Facebook if you have existing accounts. Now it is important to understand once you have signed up it will give you an option to either try out Pro for 15 days or to get started free. You want to make sure to choose Get Started Free. You will need to activate your uh, account in your email and click the activation email. Once you've done that, it will either load you directly into Gravit Designer, as you can see here, or next time you come back to the website, it will have a Start Now button. Uh, occasionally when you click start now it will take a little while to load but hopefully it won't take that long now so this is the uh, Gravit designer start interface where you choose sort of what size you want to create your document by default a lot of our assignments will worry about paper size so here you can see US letter that's a basic paper size here is portrait and landscape but there are also interesting sizes based on creating stuff for a website or for specific social media, including things like Facebook cover photos, Twitter and YouTube cover photos, as well as pre-set up print on demand stuff for making like a t-shirt or a pop socket design or t-shirts for other different websites. Here I'm going to show you starting with a print size and I'm going to choose US letter. So again, we can see I have this whole uh, application options within my browser window. So you can see here, um, I have the page. So where here it is a little grayer, this is off my page, whereas this is on my page. This is the document that I am designing within. Your settings about this page are on the right side and they show up if you click the page itself. So if I have other things in my document, you will see this right side, the detail panel has information about whatever object I have selected. But if I want to look at my default page options, I need to click that background page to see them here. By default, a letter sheet of paper is eight and a half inches by 11 inches, you can see here. And I also have these rulers on here, which I get by going to view, canvas, show rulers. Here, turn them off is how the default is. And we will be using those later to measure and line up different things. Our settings here control the space. So if I decide I want a larger piece of paper, I can actually change these numbers and widen it or reset it. Keep in mind though, if you're designing for printing, the piece of paper that's in the printer doesn't change size, just your artboard, as we would call this, or your canvas. You can make additional changes here. This one lets us rotate the canvas to switch from portrait or landscape. This button is a little dangerous. It trims to any of the objects in your canvas. So right now I only have a rectangle. If I were to click it, it will make my entire artboard fit that rectangle. 
This button here that is already on is the clip content button. And what this means is it will only show me stuff that fits in my page. So here I have this rectangle. I'll make it a little bit of a brighter color so it's easier to see. But if I move it slightly off the page, it is automatically clipped so that we don't see the bits that aren't on the page. If I want to turn that off, I can toggle that off. This background option bleed allows me to see more of the object that is off the edge as I change the bleed. Here I have margins, which give me some built in edges so that I can imagine if my printer, if I'm designing for printing, usually can't print all the way to the edge. So I want to keep my objects inside of a certain edge. You can control that with the margin settings. By default, they are linked together using this button right here. And if I turn that off, it will allow me to change a margin specifically. This edge has no real uh, like magic rules associated with it. It's just so that I can line stuff up with it and I can visualize where I want things to be. In addition, this edge, this guideline that it makes me does not print. If I go and try to print, it does not show. It's just there as a guideline of my margins. Here I'm going to set them back to zeros. Lastly, I can change the units of my document, which allow me to set it as pixels, millimeters, centimeters, or other ways to measure the page, and the DPI, which is the dots per inch, which is basically how re high resolution the print value is. We're going to leave that at 300 most of the time. In addition to our details panel on the right, you can see your layers panel on the left, which we will talk about more in depth in a later video, as well as your toolbars along the top where we will use to create art, which we will also talk about individually in later videos. Lastly, we have our drop down menus, which we will go into. But right now, I just want to talk about in the file menu how to save. Assuming you have signed up for an account and you have an account listed here, you have a little icon here for yourself, you can see that when you save, it will save to my cloud. So this is the Gravit cloud and it can save up to 500 megabytes of documents. And here I can name my document. I'm going to call this test one and click save. What's nice is, is if I close this tab and come back to Gravit, I can open up my project right where I left off. It hasn't even saved anything to my computer. So if I get rid of this and go back to Gravit, assuming it logs me into the same one it did, you can see I can start a new project here, but I can also click open from Gravit cloud. Here I can click. And there is the test document that I made earlier, along with some other example documents if I want to see how different designers have done different things. In addition, I can also download these files if I'm afraid of the cloud and want to save it on my own computer. If I do, it will download as a GV design file. These GV design files I can open by going to file open local file, and then going to the GV design file in question. Lastly, it is possible to have more than one file open at a time. If I click a new design here and choose another paper file, I can create some objects. And you can see here this document is open to the right at the top here of my previous test document. And I can switch in between them just like if I had multiple documents open in, say, Illustrator or something similar. Last but not least, when you're ready to turn a file in, you can go down to the export and export it as a PNG image, a JPEG image, or an SVG or PDF, as long as you keep the DPIs down. The things labeled with Pro cost money for an account. So here I can just click JPEG image, and it will download a JPEG image of the document that I have created so that I can turn it in on Canvas. 
In the next video, we're going to look at using some of these tools to create things when we're designing.